how to choose the perfect electric sauna heater for your sauna. Hi, my name is Veti Sairanen. I'm the co-founder and CEO of the saunaheater.com, the leading sauna heater retailer in the continental US. So in this video, we will go over everything you need to consider when choosing your electric sauna heater. And in case you have no knowledge about electric sauna heaters, I will share it all with you right here, right now. So the idea for this video came when I was training one of my new guys, one of our interns on how he can help our customers to choose the perfect sauna heater for their sauna. And I thought that if I can teach it to him, I can also teach it here on camera on one to many. So you can all enjoy the same content. So first thing when selecting your electric sauna heater is that you need to figure out the kilowatt rating that you need in order to heat up your sauna. So we have a separate video about this, but basically the bigger your sauna is, the more kilowatts you need, the more power you need from the sauna heater in order to heat it up effectively. Once you have the required size chosen, we have two types of sauna heaters. We have freestanding sauna heaters, and then we have wall mounted sauna heaters. Freestanding sauna heaters are great in a way that it allows a lot of flexibility in your sauna design. What I mean is that you can place the heater in the middle of your sauna, you can embed it in your sauna benches, or you can put it on the corner of your sauna. So that's the good thing about freestanding sauna heaters. Also, all bigger sauna heaters are freestanding. The negative thing in freestanding sauna heaters is that they usually take more space out of your sauna because you need to obey safety distances when you are placing the sauna heater in your sauna. So you need to keep some safety distances to combustible materials. Just to show you quickly, let's say we take the Homecliff 6 kW sauna heater. On our site, we go to manuals, installation and operation manual. And here we can see uh, the required safety distances. So you can find this almost at all brands. You can find them from the manuals. But here you can see A is uh, with 6 kilowatt, it's, let's see, here we go, so it's 2.36 inches, or with 9 kilowatt version, 9.45 inches, meaning the distance you need to keep between the sauna heater and combustible materials. In case you have some cold materials like glass walls or tile or stone, you don't need to obey these safety distances, these are only uh, the distances that you need to keep between combustible materials, so wood in your sauna room and the heater. And you can also reduce these safety distances usually by 50% bit depending on the brand if you buy some additional safety items like heat reflectors that you put between the heater and the wall itself. Then we have the wall mounted sauna heaters which is the second category uh, in the sauna heaters. And these are very convenient and space saving. But as said, the biggest wall mounted sauna heaters are 9 kilowatts. So it works only in normal residential saunas. If you have any bigger sauna or sauna that has a lot of cold surfaces, it might be that the 9 kilowatt sauna heater is not enough for your sauna. But if you have normal, usually let's say four person or less uh, residential sauna, you can take a wall mounted sauna heater and it will be very convenient, easy to clean under it doesn't take on much space and uh, fits nicely in your sound. So just to show you a few models, we have, for example, home drop, which looks like this. So it's mounted onto a wall, as you can see here. Then we have something like Arabia KIP that is also very popular. So mounted into a wall doesn't take much space, easy to clean from under here, as you can see here. Yeah, so as said, freestanding or wall mounted sauna heater, whichever you prefer. And you can make wall mounted work if you have four person or smaller sauna in general. Next is controlling your sauna heater. So we have two types of sauna heaters. We have sauna heaters like the Harvia KIP here that have integrated controls, meaning these control knobs here on the bottom of the sauna heater. Or at some sauna heater models, they can be on top of the heater like here you can see that the control knob that you use to turn on the sauna is here on top of the heater. But usually they are here on the bottom of the heater. And uh, these are very simple. You just turn that knob 
and uh, decide the time. So you will have a thermostat somewhere that you can use to choose which temperature you want to reach. And then you choose the time that the sauna heater will be on. So you can choose like two hours and the sauna heater will be running two hours. And after that, it will turn itself off. So let's look something more traditional like the KIP. Here you have the temperature. So from this knob, you turn and choose the temperature approximately. And from the other one, you choose the time. And usually in the US, these are limited to 60 minutes max running time. So you have to turn it again on the bottom of the sauna heater every 60 minutes. This is very basic, very easy to use. And usually these types of sauna heaters are a bit cheaper, but also the functionality is very limited. There is not much you can do with them. And you also need to be able to access the bottom of the sauna heater if you want a sauna heater that has integrated controls. Then we have sauna heaters uh, that have separate control panels, like the home drop here uh, uses something called home uku control panel. So meaning that you place this kind of control panel outside of your sauna room. So here you can see we have the home hive mini sauna heater and the control panel is here on the wall of the sauna. Or here you can see another example. The control panel is outside of the sauna on the wall. And you can wire the control panel anywhere you want in your house, but usually it's directly outside of the sauna room. And with these control panels, you can control the sauna from the panel. You can choose the temperature to the exact Fahrenheit you want to, and you can time the sauna. So you can set the sauna up in a way that it starts running. You can in the morning decide that let's start the sauna in eight hours so it will be ready when you come home from work. And usually these control panels allow you to run the sauna longer. So you can set it to run for three hours, for example, instead of the one hour that you can do with those control knobs in most cases. Also, one more advantage that having a control panel like this usually has is that you can equip it with Wi-Fi capabilities, meaning you can use an app on your phone to turn the sauna on remotely. So you can turn the sauna on when you are driving home from work and the sauna will be ready when you arrive. So these have a lot of luxurious options like that. And in commercial settings, all the sauna heaters always have a separate control panel because commercial saunas want their saunas to run continuously like eight hours in a row or whatever. So then you need to have a sauna heater with an external control panel. So just to recap, integrated controls are simple to use, but not very precise. You need to go into the sauna and turn the heater on from the side of the heater. And then external control panels allow for better controllability and longer runtime, and they can be equipped with Wi-Fi capabilities, which allows you to control the sauna remotely. They are also more handy because you don't have to bend down on your knees to turn the sauna on, but you can just press a uh, panel outside of your sauna room and it's more precise controlling for your sound. Then we have the electrical requirements, meaning that you have to check that your electrical infrastructure can support the sauna heater that you're looking to integrate into it. So usually you can find it in the manuals, but if we take again something from home, So usually you can find the electrical requirements from our product pages. So here at the specifications tab, you can see that it's 240 volt. This heater, for example, home high 15 kilowatts is 240 volt, single amps, amperage. And this is the amps that it draws in. This is the circuit breaker it needs. Here is the wire size and so on and so forth. Or you can open the manual, uh, scroll down, and most manuals have these types of tables that will tell you anything you need. So here, for example, most of the sauna heaters are wired with 240 volts, one phase. So here, if you wire with 240, one phase, uh, you need a 50 amp circuit breaker for whom hive 10 and a half kilowatt. The wire size you need is six gauge and so on and so forth. But basically before purchasing the sauna heater, send this manual to your electrician and say that, hey, I'm looking to purchase this and this. It needs this kind of circuit breaker and this kind of wire size, can we do it in my house? How much does it cost and how doable it is? And your electrician will tell you more about it. So consult your electrician before buying your sauna heater. To recap the electrical requirements, uh, go and look for the wire size and circuit breaker needed and consult your electrician uh, to make sure that your electrical infrastructure can easily fit in the device. 
We have some sauna heaters that are 110 volts or 120 volts, but those are for super small one person saunas. They are not very common and almost all sauna heaters or residential sauna heaters should be wired with 240 volts one phase or 208 volts one phase or 208 volts three phase whatever but you can see that in the product pages so these are just boring things that you need to consult your electrician in order to make sure that you can fit in the sauna heater so next i want to talk about the factors for a good sauna experience when you have an electric sauna heater so all sauna heaters have similar heating capabilities meaning that when your sauna heater is correctly sized it can reach the maximum temperature that it is designed to go to. Most sauna heaters are limited to 195 Fahrenheit and there are some exceptions like whom can reach 230 Fahrenheit but there is always a limit. That's the maximum temperature and that's what your sauna heater can reach and the heat will be the same regardless of the heater itself. And proper ventilation in your sauna is crucial so hot air raises on top of your sauna room and cold air stays on the bottom so you need to have a ventilation done properly so the air circulates and changes in the sauna room so your feet and head will be in the optimal situation have the same temperature or as close to the same temperature as possible because that makes a pleasant sauna experience the most common mistake we see is that people in the US don't do ventilation at all and when you don't do ventilation at all you will have hot air sitting on top of the sauna and cold air on the bottom. Your head will be hot and your feet will be cold and that's not very pleasant. So proper ventilation is crucial for great sauna experience. And create a pleasing atmosphere. So select good lighting, uh, good wood and uh, make a proper layout for your sauna. But what are the features of a good electric sauna heater? So steam generation is important. So we get asked a lot, can you draw water into a sauna heater? So all the sauna heaters that we have on our site, you can draw water into them. And there is two types of sauna heaters. There is these sauna heaters that have large rock capacities, like all the home ones, or like the Harvia Spirit here, that are basically just gauges of rocks. And then we have the traditional ones, like the Harvia KIP, which has a low amount of rocks. What's the difference? So when you have a small amount of rocks like this, you get very sharp steam that is not very pleasant when you draw water into them. Because there is not many rocks and they will be very hot, much hotter than if you would have gauge full of rocks. So the water will turn into steam instantly. So the more rocks, the better the steam. When you have a sauna heater like the home drop that has a large amount of rocks, that is basically a gauge of rocks, the water will slowly drip down here and turn into more equal and soft even steam. Or Harvia Spirit is one other option here. Or then something like Harvia Cylindro. Just showing you some options. That is basically a tower of rocks or boom cliff. Whatever. But the point is that the more rocks the sauna heater has, the better the steam. And if you have a heater like the Harvia KIP, you will get a sharp steam that is not so pleasant uh, compared to having a heater that has a large amount of rocks. So rock capacity is important, but it's important only if you are the type of sauna goer that goes into the sauna and likes to throw a lot of water onto the rocks. We recommend it. It's an integral part of Finnish sauna experience. And in my opinion, this is just my opinion, the sauna experience is very dry if you don't throw water on the rocks. I think throwing water other the heater is what makes the experience great when you get that steam but i'm finished myself so maybe that's just me so little rocks sharp steam a lot of rocks more mild and pleasant steam so select a sauna heater that has a lot of rocks if you want better sauna experience then selecting your brand so most of our customers get uh, the brand randomly so they just get something that their friends have because that feels easy and reliable and i understand it that's one way to go, uh, but um, I will talk you through a few of our most popular brands. So Harvia is the biggest company in the industry, publicly traded company, a giant. I think Harvia is bigger than all other players in the sauna industry combined. Uh, they make very reliable options and they make a little bit of everything. So they make the cheapest, however, still reliable heaters. Most of their heaters are made in Finland, so you can get reliable basic sauna heater from Harvia. 
or then you can get something higher end like the spirit for example which as a system comes closer to three thousand dollars because you buy the heater and then you buy the control system and the rocks and everything comes to closer to three thousand dollars or then you can get something like harvia virta which is a freestanding heater and also a bit more luxurious option so harvia is a company that has something for everyone and always very reliable heaters then uh, one more thing about harvia is that most commercial facilities use Harvia heaters because their heaters can be wired. They're club series, which is made for commercial saunas. Uh, you can choose a 208 three phase configuration, which is perfect for commercial use. Then we have Hoom. Uh, Hoom has award winning design and offers that pleasant, even steam that we talked about. So home heaters are very designer heaters and they have large rock capacities, great sauna experiences. Harvia is limited to 195 Fahrenheit, but the special thing with home is that you can reach 230 Fahrenheit. So you can reach higher temperatures with the home sauna heater. Not because they are more powerful, but because the limiter is set to 230 with them and with Harvia it's set to 195. So a lot of our customers who want to go into extremely hot sauna or try extremely hot sauna they get home heaters so designer friendly very beautiful large rock capacities and all of them are controlled with an external control system i think you could say that home is kind of the one that came up with the external control system and with the app controllability and everything so lastly i want to talk about a newer player in the market which is saunum so they have this air equalizing device attached to their sauna heater kind of a chimney that draws in the hot air from top and cold air from the bottom mixes it inside this device and pushes equally warm air back into the sound. This allows you to enjoy more evenly temperatured sauna experience where your feet and head have the same temperature and this will allow you to enjoy the sauna even longer. So this is a great option for someone who sometimes wants to have more traditional sauna experience with maybe a bit sharper steam and sometimes wants to have soft and equal steam. Obviously there is a lot more brands but if I would talk about all the brands in the market, uh, that would take ages. And I think Harvia, Hoom and Saunum are the main players. I hope I answered all your questions. If you have any more questions, feel free to call us 725-777-5484 or email us to info at thesaunaheater.com or leave your comments down below. Thank you. Ready out.